No, name me one person, mm -hmm. one person that has made a stereo-controlled reaction to make glucose, stereo-controlled reaction to make glucose, and that could ever separate it from the mess that you get. Why would they, why would they have to separate it? Why would they have to separate it? You have to separate why? it. Why? You have to separate it in the lab because you need to characterize it because you're a chemist. Nature doesn't oh, need to, to take do that. it on to the next step. Molecules that are in a mixture can't do chemistry. What, what did Lee Cronin tell you? In the foremost, I don't know. He's not my favorite billions, scientist. Like billions of compounds yeah. in seconds to hours, you get yeah. billions. And that's why they do all this research on mineral surfaces. The Be mineral surface didn't take care of it. You want? No, it did. Remember the NMR spectrum? Remember the billions of compounds and the NMR spectrum that you can't read because you're a buffoon? Unfortunately, you know, many times the science gets blown up um, too much. So one has to be guarded among these kind of, you know, uh, statements that you see. I mean, you say they find new clues to origins of life. You know, I've, I've seen this. We have been part of this. I've seen my colleagues go through this with a knowing smile. We just say yes and we just move on. But try to do really good science and not be distracted by these kind of headlines. And I think you are raising a very good point. I mean, of course, the, we need to kind of popularize the science, uh, but uh, we also need to, I mean, uh, of course, the admit the truth that we we don't know yet how the origin yeah. of life. Yeah, but you know, when you say we do not know yet, that doesn't make a good headline for a news agency. There is a recent paper by Ramanarayan and Krishnamurthy and Charles Leota, and they have written a paper on the foremost reaction, and the foremost reaction makes sugars. Why are sugars important? Sugars have another name called carbohydrates and another name called saccharides. That is one of the four major classes of compounds that build us. You have to have the lipids, you have to have the amino acids which make the proteins, you have to have the nucleotides which make DNA and RNA, and you have to have the sugars or the carbohydrates to make the polysaccharides. Those are the four classes of compounds, the small molecules that make them up, and then the polymeric forms. So sugars are one of the major classes, but to make DNA and RNA, you also have to have the sugar because DNA and RNA are made of nucleotides and a nucleotide has a three component part. It has a nucleobase, it has a phosphate, and it has a sugar. So if you can't solve the sugar problem, you can't make any of the carbohydrates. And if you can't make any of the carbohydrates, you can't make DNA and RNA. That's how critical sugars are. And people thought there was a prebiotic root to the making of sugars using the foremost reaction, and that reaction now goes away. But you may have heard people talk about the foremost reaction. James, I've showed you prebiotically plausible routes to all of those molecules and the assembly of a protocell. And I had a debate, and here you can see somebody saying that the foremost reaction makes sugars, and I was there saying, no, it would be unusable. Foremost makes sugars. Foremost reaction makes sugars. What are you talking about? You're talking because about ribose? they've never been able to separate those four. They've never been able to use those sugars for anything. Because what do you mean? They're because they're so contaminated. Name me they're so one contaminated. person that has... No, name me one person. Mm -hmm. One person that has made a stereo-controlled reaction to make glucose, stereo-controlled reaction to make glucose, and that could ever separate it from the mess that you get. Why would they, why would they have to separate it? Why would they have to separate it? You have to separate why? it. Why? You have to separate it in the lab because you need to characterize it because you're a chemist. No. Nature doesn't no, need to, to do take that. it on to the next step. There's Molecules so that are in a mixture can't do chemistry. Other people have talked about the foremost reaction and how they can quote unquote clean it up. What did Lee Cronin tell you? I don't know. He's not my favorite scientist, like you say. Normally, when you do the reaction, produces billions of products, literally within a few seconds or hours. In seconds to hours, you get billions. And that's why they do all this research on mineral surfaces. The mineral surface didn't take care of it. You want to? No, it did. I showed that using their very own papers, they weren't cleaning it up. You got to look at the experimental. He says, he, when he ran this reaction, then about 70%, 3.5 mils of the supernatant was removed for analysis. He's removing the supernatant. All the ones that are polymerized and are crashing out of solution are getting put away. They're solidifying and they're falling out of solution. They're precipitating. And then he takes the supernatant, he puts it on his HPLC, and he does the mass spec of mass spec analysis. But you're, you're, you're getting rid of 30%. And so, yeah, you're going to get less compounds. What if you had looked at the polymers that are there? You get billions and billions of polymers. 
trillions of different isomers. They were getting these filtered out, decanted off from these, thinking that it was cleaned up. It was not cleaned up. In this paper, further, what has been shown is that all of this talk of the foremost reaction being autocatalytic to make sugars. With an autocatalytic loop, even with a 10% yield for a reaction the first time around, at the end of many cycles, all the useless impurities that are not reproducing will have purged themselves spontaneously, and you will have highly purified products. This is what allows a soup of chemicals to converge toward molecules of biological significance. This is how abiogenesis works. The influence of Breslow's autocatalytic pathway in the Formos reaction is doubtful. So it is not an autocatalytic process. They used uh, very careful isotopic labeling, C13 labeling, to show that they did not get the linear tetroses and pentoses. So in other words, they were not making these five carbon sugars that you need for making DNA and RNA, nor did you get the six carbon sugars that you need for making things like glucose. Those don't exist in the foremost reaction. They're not even being made. So remember what I've told you many times is that every year we get further away so, so people think that we're getting a little bit closer, but the target is moving much further away. Here's another example of that, because the foremost reaction has been a red herring. The foremost reaction, we say it now, and it's not just me, it's Krishnamurthy, it's Leota, it's people who are working in the area of origin of life are now coming clean because they would, would close their eyes to what this reaction is doing. And now they're studying it in their detail and they say, yeah, not only is it such a mess that it would be unusable, which is what I've been saying, they said it doesn't even make the sugars that we need. So all of this, this, this RNA world hypothesis, again, it's gone away. It's gone away because you can't make the sugar. If you can't make the Furano system, the sugar that's needed, you can't make DNA and you can't make RNA. And this idea that you can create it around the base, sort of what, what uh, Sutherland has done. No, I've shown that. I've written about that in the journal Inference, titled Animate Versions of a Synthetic Chemist. I show you that that chemistry would never work, just like Shapiro has said. The concept that the scientists are illustrating is one of intelligent design. No better term can be applied to a quest in which chemists are attempting to prepare a living system in the laboratory, using all the ingenuity and technical resources at their disposal. The search for ribozymes invokes the same feeling of achievement and beauty in me that I get when I see a skilled golfer playing a difficult course at well under par. To imagine that related events could take place on their own appears as likely as the idea that the golf ball could play its own way around the course without the golfer. No, when you use all of those, those detailed things, you can't make the sugars. So we don't even know how to make the sugars, sugars, so the RNA world hypothesis goes away. The sugars can't be made. The foremost reaction doesn't work. If you do not believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, send me an email tour at drjamestour.org and we will get together and I will share with you about why I embrace the resurrection of Jesus. No, name me one person, mm -hmm. one person that has made a stereo-controlled reaction to make glucose, stereo-controlled reaction to make glucose, and that could ever separate it from the mess that you get. Why would they, why would they have to separate it? The Formos reaction produces an intractable mixture, and efforts to tame the reaction to selectively and efficiently form all those sugars have been unsuccessful. Actual Formos reaction is a very harsh conditions, high pH, uh, calcium salt, high concentration, or low concentrations even, but very high pH and heat, and the whole thing goes to pot. So if you let it go more than three or four minutes, it becomes dark, brown, dark, black, the time and then becomes very difficult to analyze. Are things yeah. sticking together and branching? Are they kind yeah. of melting together? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's like almost like a polymer that is being formed. Yeah. Our results suggest that controlling the aldol reaction of formaldehyde to selectively produce linear aldoses appears unfeasible. In other words, we need other models. Everything we've put forward doesn't work. This is by an origin of life researchers themselves. So you, people could say, oh, Jim Tour is a liar. James is a brazen liar and charlatan. He's a toxic individual and pathological liar. This is what James does all the time. They go and they hunt and they just find something esoteric that they can distort. 
and just say it confidently. And then the viewers will be like, oh, and they sound like they know what they're talking about. James is lying and people who are cheering for him have no clue what he's talking about. You're just blindly believing him. I'm sorry. Foremost gives you sugars. I'm sorry, James. I don't know what to tell you here. You're just in denial of reality. Go ahead. Continue to say that. That's just fine. But now you're going to have to say that Krishnamurthy is a liar. Leota is a liar. These are the guys who work in the era of origin of life are saying that the chemistry just doesn't work. And the concept of the Formose reaction as a prebiotic source of ribose on early Earth needs serious reconsideration, and other models slash options should be explored. The so-called Formos, even under very mild conditions, does not give you the ribose that you're looking for. But it gets much worse. James regularly botches concepts not just in geology, but also in his own field. For an example, we returned to Benner's research where he synthesized ribose in prebiotically relevant fashion. And the problem was that, you know, Steve Benner published a paper claiming borate, would give you ribose, but when we repeated that reaction and when we actually went and looked at Benner's paper in great detail, there is no yield of ribose. In this context, the use of borates has been explored and presented as a possible solution to tame the Formose reaction and to selectively produce ribose. In seconds to hours, you get billions. And that's why they do all this research on mineral surfaces. The Be mineral surface didn't take care of it. You want? No, it did. Remember the NMR spectrum? Remember the billions of compounds and the NMR spectrum that you can't read because you're a buffoon? When we actually went and looked at Benner's paper in great detail, there is no yield of ribose. The billions of compounds are actually just noise as the vertical axis is expanded to highlight the wider peaks. You know, there are some peaks, very, you know, messy peaks that, you know, one is pointed as ribose, but we couldn't but there is plenty of information on the branched sugars that are formed, the yields on the branched sugars. So what the foremost was doing was leading to more branched sugars than any okay. linear sugars. It does not stop at the linear sugars, which is what you would want for a ribose to become part of RNA. Remember the NMR spectrum? Remember the billions of compounds and the NMR spectrum that you can't read because you're a buffoon? Here's what it should look like. Here's what Benner publishes. C13 spectra showing the formation of ribose borate from glycoaldehyde in C13 formaldehyde in the presence of borate. This is his mineral guided prebiotic synthesis. This is what he gets. A close examination of the literature shows that the classical foremost reaction does not proceed in the presence of borates. Rather, an excess of glycolaldehyde to formaldehyde was used. And even in that case, linear pentoses especially ribose, are not the major component. On the contrary, it is the branched sugars that once again dominate the product distribution. More importantly, the amount of ribose observed in these borate-mediated studies was not quantified. When you look at the data, when you look at the experimental, you don't see it. And now Krishnamurthy is saying the same thing. And when we actually went and looked at Benner's paper in great detail, there is no yield of ribose. So you can say Jim Tour is a liar because he, he argued with the title of the paper. You think it's relevant because you read the title of the paper. They're saying Synthesis of Carbohydrates on Mineral Guided Prebiotic Cycles. That's the title of the paper. So you're wrong and lying, you know. No, he is now looking at their data and it's not showing it. However, all of them still produce intractable mixtures with traces of five carbon sugars identified by mass spectrometry. Remember, mass spec can detect fundamentally a single molecule. It is totally unusable. Given all these considerations, it may be prudent to reevaluate the concept of the Formose reaction as a prebiotic source of pentose sugars on early Earth. So in other words, reevaluate, come up with some other proposal because the foremost reaction is not working. He goes on. While each of these pathways have their advantages in overcoming the complexities of the foremost reaction, they also have their challenges in terms of giving rise to a process that lends itself to an efficient and selective formation of linear pentose sugars in a self-sustaining manner and not suffering from spatiotemporal restrictions vis-a-vis -vis the early Earth environment. You try this on an early Earth, it would never work. We can't even get this to go in our lab. This would never work for us. It can't be done. All this notwithstanding. He's quoting Eschenmoser on this. He had worked for Eschenmoser. Eschenmoser was one of the fathers of origin of life chemistry. Every experimental research project with the goal of demonstrating a prebiotic way of forming RNA or potential precursor is a contribution to the development of a file of experimental facts, familiarity with which 
will be prerequisite toward any decisive step in the search for the chemistry of the origin of life. Let me distill that down for you. He says that we couldn't get what we wanted here. Therefore, at least we know this reaction doesn't work, so we can scratch this off the list and start looking at another place. That's what all those words meant, that the foremost reaction doesn't work. We don't know how to make sugars, can't make sugars. You can't make sugars, you can't make RNA. I tried to invite Krishnamurthy on this channel to talk about this, and he wouldn't come on, but he graciously sent me, and he says, you understand why I can't come on. And I understand, because if he comes on, He's going to have to talk about this, and it doesn't look good for him to come on Jim Tour's channel and say that origin of life doesn't work because it can ruin their careers. He can't come on my channel, but at least he's putting out out there in the lit literature. But I would I would probe him on this. I would say, tell me more. What does this mean? How are we going to get sugars? How are we going to get the RNA model? Because everything falls apart. So he can't come on my channel, and I understand that. That's why the origin of life people don't come on my channel. It's not because they disagree with me. It's because they agree with me that they don't come on my channel. Because they agree with me, it, 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 it really slices up the field. For the same reason that one person doesn't want me to quote him anymore, and he's asked me not to quote him saying that origin of life research is a scam. Because when I quote him, it makes him look bad, but it's all been a scam. And when you look at it, just from the literature, Krishnamurthy is saying, you just look at the literature, you look at their own work, it shows that they never really got it. There is no yield of ribose. This is what I've been saying for years. And now Krishnamurthy is looking at the literature and some of this borate work saying it just doesn't work. So this is what we're talking about. And I'm telling you, year after year, this is going to be happening. These theories that they put out there, they're going to go, oh, whoops. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. This is why I say that we are clueless on the origin of life. Because of you, millions of people have heard the gospel. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he's risen from the dead and you will be saved, that's, right. that's the requirement. We talk about science concepts which draw people in. Take these nanomachines and have them drill into cells. This would be a great way to kill cancer, right? We also talk about Jesus Christ who's the best in everything. My faith in Jesus Christ means more than me than anything. If you could continue to give or give for the first time, we would certainly appreciate Appreciate it. You can go to jesusandscience.org slash donate. All U.S. donations are tax deductible. Thank you so much. Origin of life researchers, synthetic chemists, I invite you to discuss this with me. Let's talk about this. I've said this for a long time. And now even the people who work in this area are seeing what I see. So I invite you to have this discussion with me to start talking about the real problems that are happening here to tone down this rhetoric of we're just on the verge of figuring this stuff out. We're getting further and further from this all the time. But let's reason together. If you disagree with me, come on my channel. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about these results. So I invite you on this channel. And what I'll even do, if you are an origin of life researcher and working in the area of synthetic organic chemistry or biochemistry, I invite you on my channel for a discussion. And if you're afraid that, that I would, I would uh, uh, somehow, somehow put out something that you'd be embarrassed of, you come on and I'll give you the right to say, hey, I don't want that, I don't want that posted after you've made it. Or you can say, hey, I'd rather edit out this section or that section. You go on most podcasts, you don't have that option. But I'll, if you're, you are one of these groups of people that I just said, you want to come on and discuss that, I'll give you that option. And if you're afraid that I, I would violate this, that I wouldn't keep my word, then you go ahead. You go ahead. I'll come on your channel or you go ahead and have a third party uh, do the interview. And that way you'll have control of this. I won't. And we'll discuss this thing. And uh, let's reason together and talk about this and talk about these problems because they're going to continue to come up. So let's talk about these problems and reason together and see if we can change the field into a direction that is more fruitful. Thank you for joining me today. If you could give us a like, share, or podcast review, we would appreciate it. If you have any questions, you could send them to ask at jesusandscience.org, and we'll try to answer some of those questions in an upcoming video. And if you do not believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you want to hear about why I believe, send me an email to 
tour at drjamestour.org and we'll get together by Zoom and I'll share with you why I embrace the resurrection of Jesus Christ.